Hey everybody, Kevin here from Humble Craftworks. Welcome to another episode of Woodworking with Mr. Kevin. <laughs> That's me. And before we start today's video, I'd like to thank everybody out there who subscribed, liked, hit the notification bell, commented below, because we've hit over 550 subscribers. Yeehaw! What? 550. I know that's not a lot to the big wigs, but for me, it's a lot and I really appreciate it. And this morning I get a ding on my phone at like 5.30 saying, hey, thanks for showing me this video because it really saved me a lot of money um, because I had to make a template for a window that I was having made for my house. And I thought, that's cool. I'm glad somebody's getting something out of it. Uh, that means more to me than any amount of money. Uh, helping people is what I want to do. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Uh, okay, now we got to get on to the video. So these next couple of videos are going to be about building pre-finished custom cabinets. And you're like, what the hell is that? So this is something I started uh, a while ago. It took me a while to get used to the idea of building cabinets a little differently. Traditional cabinets are made uh, by milling all the wood, assembling all the parts, building all the doors, uh, building the carcasses, adding the face frames to the all that, hanging all the doors, making sure everything works, and then you take it all apart and finish it, right? I hate spraying the inside of cabinets because you got to do it. And it smells and it's gross. So the next time I bought materials, I bought all pre-finished material. Pre-finished uh, three-quarter inch plywood for the sides and the bottoms and the shelves, and quarter inch pre-finished uh, maple for the, all the drawer bottoms. One of the most awesome drawers ever, which are over here. Uh, if you haven't checked out that video, that's a time saver right there, and everything comes out looking better. It took me about six months to a year to finally figure out I could actually spray everything, stain, fit all the doors, make all the parts, finish them all completely, and build the carcasses, and then attach everything to the carcasses, and then just go and install it. So in today's video, what we're going to see is uh, me redoing some plans, building some face frames. So if you've never built face frames before, you're going to learn uh, how to pocket screw face frames together. I'm actually treating this like you're in the shop with me, and I'm trying to explain to you, somebody who's never done this before, uh, everything I do in one fell swoop and how to how to assemble your face frames how to figure out where the uh, center mullion goes right here how to lay that out safety glue screws how to put your clamps on where to put them so face frames is the first one i built three different face frames uh first one i walked through completely the second one i just kind of time lapse the whole thing and the third one which is this one right here uh, I talked to you about how to actually get this centered and the easiest way to do it. Thanks again, everybody who's uh, subscribed and liked and commented. Comment below if you have any questions. Uh, I always answer back. All right, everybody. Well, thanks a lot. I got to get to work here. Um, check out the video. Hopefully it helps. If it does, comment below. And thanks. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. And we'll see you on the other side. All right. Bye. Hey, everybody. Kevin here. Welcome back to another episode of Woodworking with Mr. Kevin. Today's episode, we're going to start building some upper cabinets. So we got a little, uh, we got our little plans that uh, we've already finished and completed the bottom section. And now we're going to do just these upper cabinets up here in one return. But there is a problem because I had to actually build a wall to push out everything about seven inches. So after I went and installed the lowers and we got the pantry in and put that wall in and all that other stuff, here's a picture of it over here. Uh, I went back and remeasured everything and I wrote down a little plan right here and I have to double check it against the plans I have now. Uh, basically just uh, shrinking this cabinet here up a little bit. Hopefully it'll take me about uh, seven or eight days to get it all done then I can spray it and then go install it. And then we have something really cool that I'm going to build which is a portable uh, island. It's on wheels, it's 43 by 32 and we're just going to be able to push it around lock the wheels down, you can eat at it, sit at it, and it has uh, two drawers and two doors and some shelves. It's portable, so the, my client can actually push it around, put it wherever the hell they want. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is just basically uh, check my math, cut down the appropriate cabinets, and then, uh, and then we're gonna start building. And we always start with the face frames and doors first, because this is a uh, blue. When you have a finish on your cabinets that's this color, dark like this, or even white, I tend to pre-finish everything, uh, that includes the trim and everything else. That way I don't have any overspray on anything and I don't have to deal with taping off crap or parts or whatever, because that's the worst. So on this part of the project, what we're going to do is we're going to build the face frames and doors first, put it all together, sand it, and we're going to fit everything before we even assemble the carcasses. Um, and then we're going to uh, finish everything. And then we're going to put together the carcasses and basically assemble it and go install it. The only thing I'm going to spray on this project is basically the doors, the face frames, and some trim and everything else is gonna be pre-finished and uh, assemble it after everything's finished and yeah, done. So uh, you gotta be a little bit careful, but in the long run, it saves you money, even though it costs more money for materials uh, in, the, in the beginning. 
So what we're gonna do now is I'm going to uh, redo the plans, figure it out a little bit. I'm gonna make a cut list and I'm gonna start milling all the solid stock, uh, all the face frames and doors. And then uh, I'll get you on the table saw. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you. Hey everybody, welcome to day two. Yeah, we got a pocket screw on all our face frames that we made yesterday. I have a, a little sleeve here for my uh, oscillating spindle sander to hook up uh, the Craig Foreman because I don't have an adjuster and I just stick it on the end of Gizmo and do like that, <laughs> voila. Sometimes you just have to improvise. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do all of the rails because you don't really pocket screw the styles of face frames. You, Pocket screw the rails. We just gotta make sure we got all the right, the right ones so we don't screw it up. Oh yeah, that looks right. So the first thing we did after we milled, uh, we got all our rails in one pile and we got all our styles in the other. We also labeled everything so we know what the hell it is. The first thing we wanna do is make sure that this is not too low. Okay, you gotta be able to slide it under there. Eh, doesn't have to be super tight to it, but uh, good enough to hold it in place. I don't know if we've went over the Craig Foreman before or not. Uh, it actually has a, a line right where the dead center is. And this one inch uh, mullion actually will fit right in there. And we're just gonna zip a dip it just once right here. The dust co collector comes on and makes a hole. And if you've ever had to drill these out by hand like I did for years, you really appreciate this. You wanna pick the best side for up. So this would be the bad side here, and the face would be the good side. And that's what you want, because you don't want to put the bad side out, right? That would be dumb. So make sure you give them the old good look over, and put the crappy side to the back. Works pretty good. And what I do is also follow these little lines on here to make sure I'm kind of square, because it's hard to get little tiny one inch pieces squared up on there. And I just follow these little indentation lines. So this thing for the price is super handy dandy. I mean, I use it a lot. Having this little guy actually makes my life easier. And uh, if you haven't checked him out, check him out. They're not a sponsor. It's just very handy dandy and uh, I, I use it a lot. That's that. Now we just have to wait for Gizmo to stop. It takes about 10 seconds for that damn thing to shut off. Might as well clean up a little bit while I'm here. There we go. So hopefully today we're gonna get a couple things done. One, we'll get all the face frames made and then we have to run molding around the inside of the face frame. And I'm gonna break out my other camera and take some close up shots and I'll try to explain how I go about doing it the easiest way possible. Hold on. <laughs> Here's the molding. Uh, it's quite a pile of it. All right, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna uh, assemble face frames, yeah. I'm going to use my uh, regular Makita and I'm gonna have it clutched at probably like 11. Something wrong with that, what do you think? Yeah, it's poplar, so we'll start out even lower. We'll start at nine. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, we're gonna attach the rails to the styles. The side part that goes up and down are the styles, and the rails go across, and just like that. So they sit like this, okay? Everything you do when you're building is uh, backwards and upside down. So uh, backwards and upside down it is. So I usually let it hang over like that. We're gonna use some type on three today, because that's all I use, really. And it's waterproof, it's FDA approved for butcher blocks. It's uh, it smells pretty good. <laughs> Gotta smell your glue, you know. 
And what we're gonna do is just put a little glue like that. That's all you need. We're gonna spread it around with our fingers there. All right. The side that goes uh, towards the inside of the face frame, you can always just do this. Uh, remove a little bit of the glue uh, right there. Just so you don't get glue splooge all over the place. And glue splooge, you'll see in a minute. We're gonna hold these together like this, make sure they're nice and flat. The next thing we're gonna do actually before we start is make sure that's tight enough and that's gonna be tight enough, I can tell you just right now. I'm gonna put them right here in the middle of these two. Okay, we're gonna get this as flush as possible. To do that, I like using a regular finish hammer. Just like that, because it, it dings better. I don't know, it just seems to work better. Now the dangerous part. If you're gonna be drilling towards you, make sure you're out of the way in case you slip. Number nine seemed to be all right. You don't want to over torque these. You want them to suck up, but you don't want them to... You don't want them to strip the damn screw out. They're fine screws, fine tooth screw. These are inch and a quarters and they're, uh, yeah. So you don't want to strip that out. See how we still got glue splooge everywhere. That's a good thing. That's what you want when you're building face frames. That uh, we have to get rid of. For that, what we're gonna do, <laughs> it's, time to, it's time to sharpen my uh, putty knives, but we're gonna always use the putty knife and uh, wipe it on your apron like this. See, bulletproofing for when you're milling. So there's that. That looks pretty good. Now we're gonna do the other side, okay? So we're gonna flip this back over here. Um, pick the best side. Yeah, this side looks better than the other side does. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Now we have to turn everything around, strike that. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna put the one inch one in. That's what we're gonna do. It's easier to attach the uh, styles <coughs> once both rails have been attached. So we're gonna do like this, just like that. So that's how we're gonna start. Same thing here. Got a little bit of glue, smush it around with the finger. End grain will suck up the glue really fast. All right. If you're gonna wipe it, wipe it towards the face so you can actually uh, Fill that up so you don't have a starving joint. It's on another video somewhere. Uh, yeah, so then we're gonna take this. You wanna make sure that if you're using these space ring clamps right here, that this ring isn't way up here because it'll stop your screw from going in the hole and you'll be, you'll, you'll be screwed. All right, because if it does, see how, I see how it missed it. If it was any farther up, what it would do is it'd stop the screw from going all the way and it'd spin and you'd be out of luck. You'd be screwed, basically. All right, we got a little, see a little bit of glue there. Let me just take this and wipe it off. And you want the, uh, you want the flat side facing down, not the beveled part, because it actually will scrape better. There we go. A little glue there, boom, take that off. All right, I'm gonna flip it over. Do you like this now. All right, we're gonna paint both ends here. And you can pre, uh, you can fill up your holes first if you like, like this. You can do that. Uh, give them a little tap so they don't fall out. Yeah, just like that. All right. Now we're gonna glue both ends. Uh, hold on here. Pokey pokey, pull all the glue towards the front that you can, because you don't want that glue joint to look like it's starving. The insides, you can actually take your finger like that, pull the glue out, so it doesn't come splooging out as much. You probably can't see that, because it's blurry. Find the good end. Uh, this has a ridge on it, this one doesn't. We're gonna go with that. We're gonna do the wide one first, because it's easier to get lined up. You see what I'm doing? I can't even tell where I'm at. Oh my God. All right. Yeah, just like that. Feels pretty good. This one actually needs to come my way just slightly. It'll be better off if you get this as close as possible to start with. Mm -hmm. Try to keep this hand out of, out of the way. Don't do this with your hand and screw it in because if you miss, you're gonna go right into your palm. I've seen it happen a dozen times. Easy. I've actually seen somebody take off their fingernail because they had their thumb down like this and they went right into the end of their thumb. Yeah, it's not good. Hear that flick, 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 flick? That's because these bits stink. Yeah, 
And the best thing to do is uh, hold on to the clamp like I'm doing here when you're screwing into it. Yeah. It's safer. All right, yeah, look at this, see? No glue, because I wiped it with my finger. And that's pretty good. And there's the face. And there it is. That's upside down. So this is the top rail, this is the bottom rail. These are the two styles right here. And uh, you've just built yourself out of your very first face frame. Congratulations. All right, I'm gonna do the rest. All right. <laughs> we're just gonna double check our measurements just to make sure we're correct, because I can cut them down now. I can't cut them down after I glued them up. Well, I can, but <laughs> ain't no good. 24 inches. Perfect. All right, so this is how everything goes, right? If you have any complicated uh, face frames, what you're gonna do is basically just take all these two and you're gonna flip them over so they're upside down. That way you know where everything goes. And you're gonna hang it off the edge like this and go from there. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. If you got glue splooging out the face, which means it's all over the face, just uh, rub it into the joint. It's probably a good thing. And there we go. All right, the next one we're gonna do is gonna have a mullion in it, or a center style, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, we'll film that next. But uh, this guy's been running too long and my camera freaks out when it does that, so here we go. All right, so here we go. I got this laid out here. You can't really see it on the other screen, but uh, I'm gonna explain it to you because I ain't moving this thing again. I have a face frame that gets a mullion put in the center. Uh, it's got two doors in it, okay? That's what's gonna happen. Um, this rail that's right here is 32 and 7 eighths, or 33 and 7 eighths, right? I'm gonna measure it real quick. 33 and 7 eighths. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna figure out where the center is for that guy right there by using our beautiful telephone. 33.875 is 7 eighths. All right. Hey. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna subtract one inch, which is the width of this, right? And then we're gonna divide it by two. 16, and that's seven sixteenths for all of you that don't know your uh, decimals to fractions. <laughs> we're gonna make it really easy. Now we just take this and we're gonna go 16 and seven sixteenths, which is right there. I have a square right here that is actually one inch is wide. And uh, we're gonna just mark it like this. All right, just like that. Actually, we'll just do this too. Boom. Boom, so we have the mark there and right there. Easy enough, right? Now we're gonna come over to this guy right here, put these together, I button them into this uh, style over here. And we're just gonna mark these two just like that. And uh, do this again. Hopefully I got it. Yep, they're all lined up, see that? So now that we have our, our center, right where we want it to be, and we can double check it by going like this. And if it's off just slightly, that's right on the money. Uh, yeah, so there we go. That's the fast and easy way to uh, figure out where your center style is, or your mullion, or whatever you want to call it. I always call them mullions, because I used to build a lot of doors when I was younger, and uh, a door mullion is in the middle. That's just the way it goes. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this piece now, and we're gonna flip it over, upside down, just like that. And then we're gonna take this and we're just gonna flip it around. Okay. We're gonna start with the big one, because it's heavier. And you'll see why in a second. Let's see. Spring clamps come in handy. Nobody likes to hear about spring clamps, but uh, you see that? Plug it in, just like that, and we're done. All right, here we go. I'm gonna butter it up like we buttered up everything else. Line it up the best you can. Clamp it into place, get yourself a screw. And we're going to screw that puppy in. See how the spring clamp helps you? It's like a third and fourth hand. And there we go. There's a little bit of glue on this side. It's just better to get the glue off now than, than later. All right. So now that we got that in there, we're going to take this guy and put this in here. We're going to do the same 
Same thing here. So we're going to take a spring clamp and clamp this in place. Like that, it's hanging over just a little bit. Here, let me get a little closer here. All right, spring clamp, clamp it in place. You need a little bit of space when you're doing pocket screws, just the way it is. The important ones are the middle. And get those as, get there lined up as much as possible. Remember, always use your clamp to hold it in place if you can. Uh, it does, does work better. All right, now we got this like this. That's all we need. A little glue. done. All right, everybody. Well, there you go. <laughs> I kind of abruptly ended it, but uh, this thing can go on for hours and hours. All right. So we got three face frames built on this one. The next one we're going to do is going to run some molding around the inside of these face frames, which is a little different. Uh, I'm going to show you how to actually uh, miter and run molding around the inside of a frame, any frame, uh, without moving your chop saw. Just set it to 45 and go. <laughs> Hopefully I can explain that so you understand that. That way, if you're in a small shop like me, you don't constantly have to move that chop saw around. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, like, hit the notification bell, and uh, we'll see you soon. You have an awesome day. Go outside and play. Hug somebody you love. You be safe out there, and I'll see you next time right here on Woodworking with Mr. Kevin. <laughs> That's me. Thanks again for everybody who subscribed. We made it to 550. Onward to 1,000. All right. You guys have an awesome day. See ya. Subscribe now. Well, my butt made a funny noise. See all this? I got to do all this before I set up and record anything. And then my stupid mouth doesn't work half the time because I'm an idiot. Uh, let's do a little uh, strategic thinking here. All right. <laughs> X marks the spot. Everything takes practice. There's nothing in the world that you can't do, that you do the first time that you're absolutely... See, I can't even talk right. Now let's get to the uh, the reason you came here in the first place. Do I look sexy? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm.